Hey everyone, Dr. Lisa PT here, and I am welcoming you to episode 30. This episode happens to be around getting into the holiday times and, and features the lovely goddess, Dr. Susie Gronsky, and her journey into finding herself really finding herself and digging deep. So I really, really um, enjoyed this particular conversation. You know, this time of year, I, I get, as everyone else does, more into the mindset of looking back at, at my life and starting to set up, you know, what I'm going to be doing in the next 365 days when January hits. And, and that feeling of gratitude attitude just gets magnified, whether you practice it yourself or not, because other people around you are practicing it. And I have to say, we are just over a year here on owning her health. And I am super, super appreciative of every one of you that listens in, everyone who might be somebody new, anyone who shares and has blessed um someone else with that that sisterhood of looking out for her because you know us ladies we don't share just you know to to randomly share we see something and we're like oh my god so and so's good i want so and so to have this it's it's a share of love you know i want so and so to have this deal i want so and so to hear these words because maybe i can't say them and that's exactly what this show is about and the energy that we work on with the guru goddess tribe and and this 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 community is about understanding how to live within our own abundance, how to see our own selves, how to turn our pain into a passion and, and in a profit if we can, right? Um, and, and then to receive, receive all of that from our sisters and to really learn how to trust them again, trust ourselves first, mirror that to our sisters, and then they'll be able to reflect that back to us. So I am so, so grateful. This particular episode is, is really that energy coming full circle. In this episode, Dr. Susie Gronsky tells us about her own journey coming coming through where she is right now. She currently per practices um, her dharma in, in going with the flow. And that's not how I met her a year and a half or so ago when we worked together. And I worked with her as, as, my co as her coach. And, um, you know, this it, the beauty of seeing, you know, your student, um, your mentee, uh, your 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 sister, your mother, your grandmother, your 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 client. The beauty of this work that we do in this sisterhood is that you can help somebody break through and just achieve things that you have joy of them achieving, and maybe you haven't even gotten to that yet. One of those things is is Susie's book. I haven't gotten my book done, and and Susie went and got her. <laughs> her book done and I, I just think it's so beautiful and we discuss where all that it's got where all that is going the boldness in her decision to call her book the ultimate cock block um dr Susie is a is an expert in men's health known globally in the community um working with men's health and and that was a switch for her and that was you know claiming and owning her voice as part of owning her health so i do welcome you to this episode listen in Give us a review if, if you can, a comment. Um, we'd so appreciate if you go on over to iTunes and leave a formal review there. You can go on to the, the main page of Owning Her Health if you go into your iTunes. It's a little harder on the phone. If you go onto the computer or laptop, in the corner there, it'll say subscribe. Please do, please do subscribe so you know when in the next episode. We run them about every two weeks or so, and then sometimes I pop in some of these goddess chats in between. Um, but in that subscribe, you can leave a review, and I would so appreciate that because that helps me do this work your energy comes in I receive it I use that for for doing this work supporting myself with it not necessarily financially but getting that message out there because my reviews more reviews will allow them to be published on there and then other women will be able to to see what's going on and we'll be able to share and save hashtag, right? Hashtag save the sisterhood and give more and more women that hashtag goddess wisdom 101 and do tag those things and tag
tag me at Dr. Lisa Holland PT um, when you do so that I can share it, especially over on my Instagram, because I so appreciate you. We are doing this together. This isn't my podcast, ladies. This is our podcast. This is the Goddess Tribe. This is the vibe. This is what we're sharing with the world so that we can demonstrate a new way, the curvy hustle, the tangents we take, the value in that, the sisterhood, and we can show other women our vulnerability with strength and how we've turned that around. Like I said, turn that pain and make it into a platform. Turn it into our voice. Let ourselves be, you know, no more the victim of our shame and, and betrayal and, 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 and issues with us being less than. Actually look at ourselves as more than because of who we are. So definitely, definitely, definitely after you listen to this episode 30, download this, pop it in the car get yourself on your way give us a review if we can and tell me what you think as we go into year two this episode of owning her health is on right now welcome to this episode of owning her health with your host dr lisa holland pt join lisa as she starts the conversation on what it really takes to become a healthy wealthy and whole ceo of your life Listen in to real talk by real lady leaders in all walks of life as they open up on personal health stories, wealth, career, and feminine abundant living. Learn how to grow by owning your body, expanding your mind, and aligning your soul with the purpose only you can pursue in this world. Happiness begins with owning her health right now. Welcome, welcome everyone to another wonderful episode of Owning Her Health. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Dr. Lisa Holland, PT, and I am excited to have my friend and colleague and just pelvic health um, extraordinaire practitioner getting her, her new book out, Susie Gronsky, on to this episode. So thank you so much, Susie, for coming on to Owning Her Health. And why don't you let everyone know who you are, what you're doing, what your, what your present mission is. So thank you so much, Lisa, for having me on the show. I, it's, it's a pleasure. <laughs> um, so I am a pelvic health therapist, and I specialize in holistic men's pelvic health, uh, spe specifically chronic pelvic pain. And um, my story is always changing and evolving and growing as nothing is static. So honestly, I'm just embracing change as it comes uh, to trust the universe with some patient acceptance. That's kind of what, where I'm at right now. Sounds good. And I think that's important to say because uh, uh, so many people I see definitely um, in this health entrepreneur area are having a real hard time, you know, not knowing exactly, you know, we're brought up kind of like, okay, so in high school, I'm going to take these courses. And that's because in college, I'm going to go to this college, and then I'm going to study this. And then after that, I'm going to do this. And it's all laid out. And then we, we go out into the world and we're like, I don't really like this or, or, or a lot of us in, in my circles, at least we saw there's these gaps, these huge, huge gaps in like healthcare mm -hmm. or in, in, you know, female entrepreneurship or in how we wanted to live our life and we want to go towards it. And, and it's not so mapped out and it is evolving and we're evolving. So I think that's like, super for you to bring that up because yeah that's how it is and it is really hard we're both physical therapists and and definitely physical therapists it's super hard because we kind of are have not not every one of us but a lot of people went into physical therapy definitely more recently with mm -hmm. um, bigger risk aversion they kind of wanted to know how it was going to be and who they were going to work with right um so are you finding that you know it, was it was it a shift in sort of how you saw your it was it your own health was it was it was it a mission thing what, what do you think kind of got you off of that because I know you were like me right all the lots of letters after your names within the 10 years after school you know five right. years after school, doing this whole big thing and uh -huh. all of a sudden it's like I want to do you know I want to write you know pelvic pain the ultimate cock block or I want to be a barista <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, that was my next thing. I was like, oh, okay, so I've done this. I did write my book, um, and which you, I have to give you lots of credit because you are my coach, and I don't know if many people know that, but part of my book is dedicated to you for encourage me, encouraging me to step out of the 
fear and the comfort zones of worrying about criticism and what my quote unquote colleagues are going to think of me and the language that I write the book. And it was truly an inspiration and really a breakthrough in my career at that point is, you know, finding my voice and finding who I was because, you know, in school, like you said, it's all about school and classes and what's next and about controlling our environment so much that when things change, we think that the world is falling apart and that this isn't supposed to be happening the way it's supposed to. And I feel that the resistance that plays in that can really set you back if you don't allow it to just do what, you know, the universe to take you where it's supposed to take you. And so I'm a firm believer of that. But in any case, it was um, my journey kind of started with finding, you know, really looking at there was a need. Um, guys needed help. Uh, I had more and more men coming into my clinic. I was a little nervous to really narrow my niche into just treating men because, oh my gosh, um, is it, does this mean that I don't treat women anymore? Uh, and that's not the case because I think now more than ever I'm seeing women because, you know, men have partners and spouses and friends and sisters and mothers and grandmothers and you know it. So, and again, you really did I do owe a lot of this credit and this exploration to you to opening up my world to own that it's okay to step out of our comfort zone in order for bigger and better things to flourish. And, and risk is not a bad thing. And uncertainty is not a bad thing. It's leaning, uh, leaning on uncertainty to allow you to, to grow and to, you know, find yourself. Because when I was in school, and I'm going on a tangent, but when I was in school, and you mentioned about, like, keeping everything steady, and all we did was learn, and our head was in the books, my, my whole life was in the books, ever since I was a kid, you know, it was study, 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 I had no idea who the hell I was when I graduated PT school, I was 24 years old, I had no idea, who am I, who is Susie Muckdad at the time, I'm married now, Susie Gronsky, but who the hell was I? I had no idea. I had no idea. And that is scary. Number one, because you're out in the world. And now you're like, I know all of this foundational stuff. I know the book stuff, but I don't know myself. So I was in a bit of a self identity crisis. And, you know, I did a little bit of traveling and I worked, but it wasn't very nourishing for me. I just did it to do it. And, and to, you know, I've got this doctorate degree. So now what? And you mentioned, you know, getting degrees and getting letters after your name. That was, that was me, you know, that was me. It was like, it's not enough. I have to be bigger, I have to be better, I have to have a presence. But what are those letters really representing? They're not representing my identity. That's not me. They're just, it's, it's me knowing how to study and take a test, you know? Mm. So mm. I, you know, that, that was pretty deep and that re revelation was not too long ago. And like I said, it was your work that had inspired me to think a little differently and then my current dharma practice and working with buddhism and 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 learning a lot about the meaning of life and wisdom and what that truly means and it's not just worldly knowledge that gives you wisdom so that's beautiful susie thank you so much for sharing that because oh yeah you know and 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 thank you for crediting me with that but that was all you <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. I, mean, I open doors, but it is, it is true. And this is different what therapy is. You know, this is a big difference with therapy and coaching. It's like the coach opens the door. It's very similar to as in yoga. And you're talking about, you know, your, your, your Dharma practice with uh, the Buddhist line, but even my karmic practice and, and Dharma practice with more of the um, yogic sciences, the classical yogic sciences, it, it, it's that idea of um, there's only so much you can look out, mm -hmm. right? And then you seek and you, you, you find your teacher when you're ready for that teacher at the stage you're at. It's all about stage ready, uh, change readiness. And, but it, I can only give a gift if you're there to receive it. And right. I'm sure you feel that like when you're working with your patients, right? You can only give all of those degrees, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of information, <laughs> all that damn research. Right. <laughs> they're not there receptive. Who cares, right? Yeah. If the patient experience is something that makes them feel unsafe, they're going to go down to their primal, their primal self. And that's really what we're both, you know, studying in all that personal development and, 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 and spiritual work or mm -hmm. however you want to call it. Um, do you, you, were, you mentioned, you know, that younger guru gal, that, that girl that thought it was going to be in those books. 
-hmm. If you could go back to her right now, if you could go back and speak to her, because I, I firmly believe in anyone who's been listening to this podcast, I think we have this Holy Trinity inside like our whole life. And I think, you know, this, this maiden fire and this motherly lover and this wise matriarch, they're sort of always blending together to protect that inner child. And when you're there at that inner child, you know, you're naive. You don't know, you know, your world is just sort of what you, what you see. So now that you've kind of grown into all those, all those forces, all those goddess forces, what would you in your mix now love to kind of sit and talk to that inner child about? Because I think we can still talk to her. So what would you say? That's a great question. And, and honestly, you know, what I would say is probably going to change as I grow, of course. But right now in this moment of time, I would say that the work that I'm currently doing in this life is ultimately to help in gain with, again, in gaining that inner wisdom so that I can help free others from, from the suffering because everyone suffers. And so I think at the end of the day, it's taking the wisdom that I'm gaining and the compassion and the loving kindness that I emulate, you know, because that's so big with my personal life and meshing that with my business life, like being that compassionate, that giver, um, that love. Um, to emulate, to help really reduce the suffering that someone is going through, and, and not only physically, but mentally. And um, so that, that's ultimately what I would tell my inner child self is, you know, your, your goal is not about the I, because um, a lot of it is at that time was, you know, I'm not here, and I'm not good enough, and I'm not this or that or another, or blaming um, someone else for what's happening. And, and ultimately, it all comes from, like you said, an internal awareness of, you know, who you are, what you represent, and, and how does that manifest in, in the world that you create for yourself. And I feel like if we put away, put aside that I, and that self cherishing, that grasping that we hold on to, and really look at the bigger picture of, you know, what's the purpose of life and, and what am I here on the, in this life to do? And it's very precious. And I think ultimately, I, again, my Dharma practice is very strong right now, but it's understanding that everything that you do should be around trying to help others reduce their suffering and whatever that looks like for them. Mm, such good stuff there. So in your present work, you know, how are you how are you bringing a little bit of that Dharma practice into what you're doing now? How, how are you, how are you translating that? Cause I know that's, that's always so hard mm -hmm. is you, like we are saying with change readiness. It, and then when they're all ready to change, because you do see the suffering, mm -hmm. what are some of the ways you're doing it a little bit, I guess, you know, differently now than maybe what you thought you'd be doing in yeah. terms of working with people suffering. <laughs> right. No, you mean not just sticking my elbow in their performance? Yeah. Right. The muscle yeah. energy, lining yeah. your hips up. It's all the high same. Velocity thrust. I know, I know. And again, we're all fighting. And that's the thing that gets me is that everyone's got, there's such a strong opinion about what they do and what they do is the best thing that they do and they're the guru and everything. And I think, I, I don't think that really makes a difference. And that might be very charged. And I think a lot of people or my quote unquote colleagues in the public or PT world in general would look at me and say, you're insane. But I, I honestly, I don't think that the healing comes from what modality you use. I think the healing comes from allowing that person to feel trusted and or to trust you, to feel supported, to feel loved and to feel listened to. I think the biggest thing that I'm doing differently is just allowing that person or my client or whoever is walking in my door to tell their story the way they want to be told instead of me projecting an agenda on them. You know, like this is what you have to do. You have to do X, Y, and Z in order to be better. But who am I to tell them what prescription they need to get better? You know, I, I feel like they all have their own inner sense, inner body healing tissue, whatever you want to call it, their own inner pilot light to heal themselves. And, I, and a, a huge part of my work is allowing that to come through and I do use manual modalities. I think they're great. Honestly, I do. I don't think that anyone is better than the other. I, I think the magic happens is when you really using skillful uh, and powerful questioning to help release some of the barriers that they might be limiting themselves 
that manifest into physical barriers, whether that's pain, mental pain or physical pain. But I think that's important to reflect with them. And sometimes they're not ready and I'll have people not come back. And that's fine because like you said, they're on their own journey and they're not ready to receive this message or do this work that is so desperately needed for them in order for them to heal and feel better. Um, so I'm very cautious of that. And I, I do use my intuition a lot, which I've never done before either, mm -hmm. to accept the energy that I feel in the room, to acknowledge the discomfort or comfort or fear that other people are um, energetically expressing and not just verbally expressing, but being aware of their, verb, their body language and their energy that is being expressed is huge. And again, it's being an observer, a silent observer, and allowing them to tell their story and reading behind the lines a lot of times. Um, so that's, that's what I'm doing much differently. I really take their story and, and, and create a timeline or a map. And it's not just physical. And I, I really try to, to nail that right away with them and say, you know, healing and getting better and health doesn't just include the physical component, the body work, because that's just a piece of the pie. And by all means, I am not a fixer or a magic cure or a magic fix or, or you know, a passive kind of thing. I don't believe that anyone trying to get better or improve their quality of life can truly do that passively. So I'm a huge advocate of active, playing an active role in one's health and, and owning their health for whatever reason that that may be, you know, whatever situation or illness or disease or condition that has come to their life, I, I really encourage them to think beyond the actual physical findings, MRI scans, diagnostics, what people have told them, what they tell themselves. I mean, all of these things contribute to, I think, why we're stuck in whatever thing right. that we're stuck in, if that makes sense. So that, that's been huge. And, and I, personally struggle with that a little bit as well because you know your inner self critic will is very conscientiously in the background saying negative things or that what you're doing is not right and what they want from you is just body work and you should just give it to them and the customer is always right kind of thing and I, I have to really sit with it and meditate and, and acknowledge that I feel that way but also say that's not the truth that it's going to help, really truly allow me to be that healer, to allow me to really make a difference in someone's life. And so it's a fine dance that I'm continuously trying to learn and evolve in. And by all means, there is no such thing as perfect perfection. <laughs> it's only, you know what I mean? It doesn't exist. And I used to be that way. And I, again, those habits are very hard to eradicate. Sure. Well, because they worked for you at some point. Right. Oh, you know, yeah. It's not that they don't work at certain points. It's just that when you're living a life where it's no longer working, you know, right? Einstein's mm -hmm. right, doing insanity is basically doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And so right. many times we get locked into those patterns because we are really minds, right? It's our brain chemistries. It's our perception of what's going on, our threat levels or whatever that really determines whether or not we're going to go exercise. Right. You know, whether or not we're going to eat that food. And, 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 you know, you're talking my talk. It, it's, it's motivators and behaviors. It's, yep. it's us understanding behavioral change. And I think that comes from us in our own story, our own owning our own health. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people go into healthcare or wellness because they had that epiphany. They had that, you know, I hurt my ACL, my uh, and my knee. And so therefore, you know, I really thought it was cool. And, and really what they were attaching to is they liked the relationship that their provider had with them. It right. wasn't like the physician or maybe they were life's changing, you know, surgery or something. And they're like, Oh, now I want to be, you know, a heart surgeon because I, when I was a baby, I had a heart thing in this, right. you know, you're just, uh, in awe. And it's really your own um, living through your own stuff. And if you can align that, and get paid for that, that journey and, 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 and work. And then you just start attracting that energy. But it is hard because it's kind of whatever's going on in your mind. Like you said, that that's really what the, the, the magnet is. And you got to work on that because no matter what you're wearing, whatever, what clothes you're wearing, you're going to still get what's going on in your mind right. attracted to you. Um, 
So, so tell me a little bit, Susie, in the time we have, what that shift, like you were saying, made that shift. You, you realized you were really there for that men's health. Mm -hmm. And that you had something there by your, per that was a personality thing, right? I mean, yeah. that was understanding that you might be your, your, your magic with, with pelvic wellness and being mm -hmm. a, a board certified practitioner in that might actually fill in that gap. Uh -huh. How did that, how did the, how did you go to that and get started on that being your book? Like, where did that book come from? Which is right now, you know, a number one, you know, men's health release. Like I said, pelvic pain, the ultimate cock block. So definitely we'll have the, the tags for that and, and the links for that um, in the show notes. But, you know, where did that come from? And, and how did you write that? How did you bring a little, how did you bring Susie, you, the person versus anyone else with those same letters right. into that book and into your work right now with your work that you do in Asheville? Uh -huh. Yeah, great question. Honestly, it was my patients, my clients. One in particular that really, I just started to ask questions and stop being so thinking inside the box and thinking that I had this magic cure for them. You know, I, I kind of just asked them if you, you know, they would usually, men would usually come to find me after several years of having these symptoms. And I, in my head, I thought that was ridiculous because if I was feeling genital pain and is having issues with sex or what have you I mean the genitals and sexuality in general you know it's a big topic probably for another time but mm -hmm. sexuality in our culture is very uh closed off and it is a vulnerable aspect for many people that we don't discuss and so it has a lot of value when something is off down there you know so like that in general creates a huge alarm bell system that can manifest in so many psychological avenues but um in general all i did was ask because they just kept coming again the universe kind of brought these men into my world and i'm like there's got to be something for you and so i started to do my own research to say what is available for these men and what resources and there was nothing. I mean, there was, and these books that are out there are great by all means. I'm not bashing any, any book, but I don't think they were written in a language specifically for the, for an average Joe, a 20 something year old guy to pick up and understand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was, I feel like I was, a, I always say this to all my guy patients. I'm like, I think I was a man in another life who had pelvic pain because <laughs> this is something that comes so natural to me. I'm like, why hasn't anyone thought about just writing a straight up manual for guys, guys like short and sweet, you know, lots of pictures, right. you know, bring some humor to it. Cause that's how guys like to, to talk about their so genitals. They get serious through the laughter. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, they get some positive endorphins going and some lightheartedness that they're not alone and they have somebody speaking their language, you know, no big medical jargon that, scares them there's so much fear mongering going on around health in general and and it just kind of keeps them trapped in this this vicious snowball cycle of you know emu emulating doom honestly they're just their own prisoner of their own body so I was like I need to write something <laughs> and I was working with you at the time yeah. and, I, and I and I and I was so scared to write this because I thought I did not know enough. Number one, I never know enough, right? What do I know? I'm just a peon. Self fulfilling prophecies, right? Yeah, right. I mean, what do I know? I just have this degree and several letters <laughs> after my name, but shit, I still don't know because I don't, you know, and, and because I don't speak with a, you know, very research like mine and professor like, you know, I don't have that air about me. I am really just Which down. Which is why you communicate with the people for the, you know, there needs to be that grassroots connector. Not everybody is going to read a journal, right? And not everybody thinks about your abstract. Right, exactly. And I don't, I myself don't like reading that. Like I like to, to learn by doing and touching and pictures and coloring and I'm very auditory and visual. So I kind of just took what, what, what I felt comfortable with. And I said, I like using language that's funny. I like saying fuck shit or damn, you know, I, I don't care about saying penis or cock or, you know, I just, it becomes very natural to me. I'm not shy or, or anything in that essence. And I think 
what I'm getting now in terms of feedback is they really do appreciate this book. And I was so scared to put it out there because I was afraid of what my colleagues were going to think about me. You know, I'm not professional, right? Um, what, what kind of book yeah, is this? Big potty mouth. Big potty mouth, right? Big and you haven't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and honestly, guys, I did not, you know, inv- reinvent something earth shattering. It's just the knowledge that I learned from reading all these books, right? What was out there and then writing it in a language that is down to earth, understandable and funny so that if somebody does wake up, you know, a dude wakes up and his penis starts hurting, he doesn't have to freak out. If he types in pelvic pain, he has maybe my resource. If it's already out there that much, I don't know. But if he's typing it in, he can actually calm down and and re- reduce some of the the effects of um, persistent pain and catastrophizing, ruminating thoughts and hopelessness and fear for them, and have just quality resources that they can understand and relate to. And so that was my honestly, that was my goal. I just asked. I had the courage to ask my patients to be vulnerable to ask, right? Because I am, you know, back then I was, well, I'm the clinician and I should know everything. Mm-hmm. And right now I'm not. I'm I'm on their level. I know, mm-hmm. I, and honestly, I. I am at the point where I'm like, I know nothing because my teachers are in front of me. And if I know nothing, I can actually be open to learning so much more and how to help the human soul, the human person versus a protocol in a textbook, you know? And that's for me the tipping point. And, 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 and it's very humbling for me to know that I don't have to know it all. I, I, I don't, I can ask questions. And if I don't know, I know where to look. Cause honestly, PT school just taught you where to find the, where to look up research and where to find answers and who to connect with. You know, I think that's the only thing that I learned from PT school. <laughs> Cause we all have different keys and that's why, you know, if we're really going to look at owning our health and the industry owning you know, health care and stop making it sick care, at least in the Western model, then we really need to be having those conversations. I need to get off of that high horse. I need to understand that I'm saving them time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know where to look. I know where to, you know, I know how to look at an article and be like, "Mm, that just doesn't sound right. You know, like, I don't know where they got this information. I know how to read a label. I know how to give, you know, that I'm going to save you all that time. But ultimately, you're right. Like, they need to learn how to. The best thing we can do um, is be transformative leaders. No matter what the letters are after our name, transformative, meaning put it back in the person's hands to do the work, to be the seer, to be the one, because they're going to be the one that drives away with whatever relief they have. And they need to take care of this, you know, vessel. They need to, right. their, their job is to not get into that situation again. And then also to share. And, you know, how is that owning our own health as, as providers? Right. We're not going to get burnt out right. because the energetic exchange mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. going to be more fair. Mm-hmm. It's not fair to say I'm going to, you know, I guess at one point when you looked at a, at a body as a carpenter and fixed, you know, aligned right. all the physics right. and people were like, I feel better. And then walked away. It didn't work. You know why? Because, they came back and they came back in big troves and then they came back with other problems, the right. real root problems manifesting. Here we are, diabetes epidemic. Here we are, mm-hmm. you know, addictions epidemic, mm-hmm. multiple traumas mm-hmm. in, in our cells. And so we need to change. So I thank you so much, you know, for, for seeing that and doing that for the men because these men are partnered with women. It's hard. It's, you know, and other men and these relationships and they have families and children and, and yeah, they are the ones, you know, maybe with some extra power in corporations and things like that. And the, the, the more they can see partnering with women for their help, mm-hmm. the more we rise, right? The more we become more significant in the world. So I really, I really love that you took that upon yourself because I think, you know, a lot of the men, they need to have that partner where they can see some of our masculine side in us, in their caretakers. Right. You know, not not always being the mommy loving thing. Yeah, right, right. My mom was, and I get that balance, that masculine feminine, you know, like we, men both have it, women have it. And I, I grew up around a mom that was, had to be matriarch and patriarch. She was a single mom. She had to be very masculine. 
And um, she had to own up and step up, and she did it very well. She filled some big shoes, and she did it well. So I had a good uh, role model. Beautiful. <laughs> and that's it. And then that matriarch wisdom, right, kind of speaking to you now, helping you, whether you realize it or not. I think you realize it, but a lot of women don't realize, like, that mother, I just had another um, episode on um, mother-daughter, and I have a second part that's coming out now. They'll both be out by the time you get, you get this out. But go back, go back to that if you're listening to this, because I, I was speaking on that. You know, that mother is that mirror, for good or for worse. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of re replaying that in our own health. Because, you know, we say, oh, money, socioeconomics is determining whether or not we get um, good health. In fact, I think right now in America, the number one thing that determines whether or not you're going to get good health is your zip code. Oh, you're kidding. So, it, yeah, it, that's what it shows. So, um, you know, but the reality is, how am I making my wealth? It's kind of how I feel about myself, my own right. personal value. Right. And, and how do I feel about myself as a woman? It's kind of what I saw my opportunities in life for safety and significance were. Mm -hmm. Right? So looking back, Susie, I want to finish off with... Um, Number one, where can we find you? So where can we find you nowadays to uh, work with you? Yeah, I have a website, drsuzyg.com, D-R-S-U-S-I-E-G.com. I'm on Instagram at drsuzyg, uh, Twitter, same thing, and Facebook. Um, and I also have a podcast I just launched called In Your Pants. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, where we open up the conversation pretty much like yourself in a different way, but opening it about sexual health and breaking down social constructs and barriers oh. related to our genitals for both men and women. So it's fun and very informative. So that's my new newest project. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. And um, so then my last question to you is if you could go 10 years in the future and and, and, and speak as that wise matriarch, right? You're probably getting a little vibes from her now, kind of. Um, what, what would you want to say back to you right now? Where are you struggling that you think she might have the wisdom for? Mm, that's a good mm, question. One. Yeah, it is a hard one. <laughs> and you might say, I don't know. That's fine. Right. I, honestly, I letting go of attachment. I think right now I'm struggling right now I'm struggling with attachment and that's attachment on all levels. I mean, that could be materialistic and ego and work and all of that, whatever that means for someone, but I have my own definition of attachment. So I'm working on letting go of attachments so that I can truly be free. And, mm, and so yeah, I, I know she's going to tell me that like, once you let go, you know, letting go is easier than holding on kind of thing. So letting go of attachments that are holding me now, that are tying me down, weighing me down, um, so that I can truly flourish and be who I am meant to be in this world so I can be the best benefit of, for others. Beautiful. And that's so, so scary. So I, I, I channel her in to help you with that because, you know, we, we do it over and over, but it is hard because it feels so safe when we're so solid because you're mm -hmm. right, right? Like, you know, you know your crap. And so you're like, I'll just, I know this stuff. I know how to deal with it, but you don't know the unknown. So going mm -hmm. back full circle to where we started, being open to that unknown because it is right wherever I am is where I am <laughs> and, and, right. and being free to that. So I wish, I wish all of the best with you. I thank you so much, Susie, for being on here. That, that talk was really inspiring and, and thinking out of the box and making it work for you and, and changing your whole, I know in just the time we've known each other, you've changed your, you, you live in a different place. You've changed your, 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 your website and your mm -hmm. look and your, and your message and you wrote a book and all of this stuff. And it's just really super beautiful. So it's super inspiring. I thank you so much for being on here. And everyone else, make sure you check the show notes. You connect with Susie. If you have an issue, definitely um, take a look um, at her book. And is that book available on Amazon? Is that on your website? What's the best um, way to yeah, they can they can check out the book. I have a web a web landing page for the book uh, on my website, but they can also purchase it on Amazon. There's an e version that just got launched. That okay. 
it's like a it's super cheap right now because again it, my goal is just to let people yeah. know about these resources yeah. and get it out there yeah just just yeah. help people I, and it's not about making money it's about changing lives yeah and so we'll have all we'll have those links on on the, on the show notes too on the lives and show notes social media show notes and um so definitely definitely download that thank you so much for being here on another episode of owning her health and we'll see you next time thank you bye Thank you for listening into this episode of Owning Her Health with Dr. Lisa Holland, PT. To learn more about her personal and professional development service, visit her online at drlisahollandpt.com.